Hey, 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 Laura J here on the first day of a 66 day to transform your self image series. In this series, we are going to ground our highest timeline. And in the process, we're going to tell the real story of Rome, but not the capitalized Rome that we have known as the history that we came from. Instead, we're going to be talking about the reality of my empowerment, not mine specifically, but each of us when we maintain the proper position of office of man or woman, where we can actually stand as the appropriate authority over the land, air and water that we came to be stewards of and over as ones that were granted dominion over the land, air, and water by the grantor of dominion who gave us dominion over all these things that we then created a counterfeit version of that we have been exchanging as if it were true when we have become so indoctrinated to believe this fictitious reality. I want to remind us all that reality or truth or a biography is now called nonfiction, as if fiction were the common cause of our addiction. So we're going to be moving away from that in the 66 day series. And to kick it off this morning at 8 a.m., I hosted the first short and sweet call about the transformation y'all are going to go on as you move through the sacred sojourn of the soul with others who have maneuvered it too and want to contribute back to you and also gain from the connections too for that is the benefit of being in common unity with others who want to be in community too so we're going to be gathering as peaceful inner warriors united we have a telegram assembly group where you are able to be part of a conversation. There's a Facebook group, Where Misfits Fit, Peaceful Inner Warriors United is how you'll find our Facebook community. And over on Telegram, you just look for Peaceful Inner Warriors United Assembly. Those are two groups that are already going to be part of this conversation, where this information is gonna be posted. And I am also using my Facebook page which is Laura J. E. Hamilton, your guide home to yourself, I believe is what the tagline or subtitle is. But the point is that I am making this as easily accessible to as many as want to be part of a transformation of self image that allows you to become the mage or magi of your own world. I want you to see how many worlds you're actually part of with all of the identities that you have taken on and invited entities into your identity with, literally in the word itself. The 1D box you check to say I am that brings in an entity that governs that box that we then try to fit ourselves into because now we believe ourselves to be that, which before we saw to be separate from us, but then take on and sometimes let consume us. So to move away from that, we're going to become more intentional about these identities. But first, today's episode was really focused on the fight between the fearful and the faithful that take place within. So thank you to Megan and Peter for showing up this morning. And to everyone who moves through the message we shared as an experience this morning, and is excited and ready for tomorrow. I cannot yet stream to Peaceful Inner Warriors United, the YouTube channel where you are finding this message because I just started it last week. My channel, Laura J.E. Hamilton, is where these messages will be streamed until I am able to have enough subscribers here to be able to go live and also have community because both of those things are things that I haven't been able to do on my own channel because I got a strike for mentioning something that was forbidden within a for Biden land which is where the fictitious counterfeit version of reality 
is yet again called into mind and the frame of this with a name mentioned, many would say, oh no, you didn't just bring in politics into your message, did you now, Laura? Well, the poll I took is the urn of a ballot box that I say, no, you ain't gonna burn anyone or the books of those who wrote them neither. But we're gonna sit down and as responsible leaders of ourselves and others talk about the BS of belief systems that have kept us believing ourselves to be safely separate when the reality is we're really talking about the same thing, which is energy, using a different box, which is a word, to package it differently so we think it's different when we're really talking about the same thing, using different words to do it. So I believe we need to leave the walls to be bridges that actually help us unite when they are dropped, we can walk over those walls and say, okay, that was what I called it before. And now I see the all is all things, which excludes nothing. So no thing is excluded from the all, therefore all is all things and non things too. For things are person, places, and things. Those are nouns. We need to really be careful about being converted into a thing, which is gonna bring us into that fictitious version of reality that is a counterfeit identity creating entity that ultimately creates as many identities as we need to feed the beast at the expense of the one who is actually going to pay the price for it is us who pay if we're not nice, because that ripple effect comes into the populace of which we live, in which we live. So instead of that ripple effect being negative, let us make it a positive one instead, which I hope this message is for you in your day. And I look forward to coming to play with you again tomorrow, for that is what we do in this 66 Days to Transform Yourself image series. Enjoy. Hello, hello, hello to all those who show up to see this message. When you do, it's exactly the right time for you. And Megan Lloyd and I are actually here ready to start the transformation of self-image experience that will be a 66-day process that you're invited to go on yourself with others who are also doing the inner work. So what does the transformation of self-image entail? And what does it mean to and for us? And what does it also mean for those who are around us? Because the thing about transformation that often gets overlooked is the fact that those around us love the version of us they know and can't necessarily afford for us to change because then the way they love us, what they love about us, how they interact with us, all of those dynamics then also change because we chose to change. And so people- that often get the, love us the most the fact that those around us love the version of us they know so oftentimes what we find is there's a loop that we get stuck in that starts to replay when we're not expecting it because we're on to something else and then that program starts playing so i am just getting my computer loaded up there and Megan I very much appreciate you for showing up this morning and it really means a tremendous amount to have a woman of your caliber on this call to kick off this transformation experience because I didn't know if anyone was going to come but your message came through saying ah oh, just about to jump on and it's like oh wow other people are going to do this with me amazing because I'm so used to just going and if 
I have to do it alone than I do, but it is so much nicer to be able to be with friends that have significant value to offer to. So I acknowledge you, Megan, for being willing to come into the frame and have the leaves in there too. And I wanted to keep this message short and sweet today because it is the kickoff call for a 66 day transformation process that I don't want to be capitalizing on people's team, time, energy, effort, attention, and money any more than necessary, because ultimately we're all strapped to an extent with the amount of time that we've got, our lives are already full. It's just a matter of what's it full of. And today, the message I really wanted to touch on, and Megan, I'd love for you to have input if you if you would like to contribute anything um, and then we'll keep it short and sweet so my intention is to 15 minutes or less really um, but today the topic I really wanted to address as the kickoff to a 66 day transformation that's going to lead into another 66 day experience after that I see the computer is paused. I don't know. There, it seems we're back. Um, but this second 66 day transformation will actually be putting together the album that those who participate in this part of the transformation get to be part of by doing the inner work first to change our energetic signature so that we can then contribute music at a higher level or art at a higher level. So whether that's painting, drawing, dancing, whatever our art is expressly we're going to be able to do it at a higher level when we see the fight between the fearful and faithful at a different level than we ever have before and so i want to frame um i have a little cat meowing around at my feet there sorry um but the fight between fearful and faithful what does that mean and megan if you want to chime in here by all means the fight between the fearful and the faithful are this is the story of the good and bad wolf, essentially. The grandfather and grandson sitting around talking where the grandfather tells the grandson there is a fight happening between two wolves within. And when the grandfather asks about which wolf will win, <laughs> when someone gets tripped up on the things that he's trying to get over in order to get out and Peter comes in, this is where we see that the fear is actually the false emotion appearing real that needs to move that we didn't resolve the first time that it showed up. So when it doesn't show up or when we don't solve it the first time, we have to resolve it because we didn't solve it the first time. Good morning, Peter. It's amazing to have you here. This November 1st. Yay, amazing. So I was saying before you got on here, we're keeping it short and sweet and really focusing on the fight between the fearful and the faithful that happens within and those wolves fighting. So the good wolf and the bad wolf, and then the grandson asks the grandfather, which wolf will win? And then the grandfather says the one you feed. So it's really about the shift between the false emotion appearing real that's stuck, not moving within the energetic den of us compared to the faith of being able to be in flow. So that is really where I think we would be well served to start this transform transformative experience. And so what does that mean to you to live in faith is the question. So what does it mean to live in faith for you? What does it mean to see the fear show up and then say, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to move you because that belief system is not serving me in this moment now. So just becoming very mindful of the fear patterns that are showing up and to recognize them as that instead of looking at them as something more than what they are. These are just stories we've told ourselves previously and they got really familiar. 
so if you look at your mind like a giant field of long grass and the paths that we've taken many times before being the trails that have been blazed and are well padded down because we've taken them and they seem more safe and familiar because we're aware of where they lead even if we don't like the end result those that is an analogy for neuro pathways and when we change the neuro pathways we're going to naturally have some fear around what that means and what that can mean to and for us too so as you make changes please recognize the parts of you inside that don't want to have to change the pattern that don't want to have to change what part of that beautiful luscious field of long grass has parts packed down so it's our responsibility to really become mindful of those neural pathways that are going to really help us blaze new trails inside of us and to have faith compared to fear in mind, I believe is one of the greatest ways that we can have grace with ourselves as we go through that process of changing which wolf we feed by not nature, but by nurture maybe, that we have been pouring into and supporting and loving up on because that's what we knew. And generally we do the best we can until we know better and then can do better. Megan, what were you, what, what was that? I said, hear, hear. <laughs> hear, hear, yes. And that's exactly where we are. Because yeah. there is literally when we stop being here and we mark a cross at the spot where we stopped being present into the now in order to then step into some version of time outside of now. Yeah. I wrote the question here like fear where does it come from and you touched on it a little bit like for me personally where I think my fear comes from is as a child I need to be loved fed nurtured and cared for and when one of those things is not met you know my mind or my ego develops a coping skill to get that for me <laughs> to or either protect myself from getting hurt by not getting it um, just a theory of another Gabor Mate's thing is just <clears throat> you have this thing that's protected you as a child and it carries on with you into adulthood but it's no longer serving you as an adult this best friend that you had that was always there for you is no longer helping you anymore and so with compassion you know we ask this friend to to stop and <laughs> to stop trying and controlling and bringing up these emotions because it's not real what we're facing now when I'm 37 compared to when I was seven. Um, <clears throat> what to, what's it like to live in faith? And you mentioned this uncomfortable, right? Uh, it's definitely, it feels uncomfortable for me to start a new pattern, to start a new daily routine. Like it's something that I'm just not programmed in yet, right? right? That's another thing, these fears are like, programs or experiences that people around me have had that I've taken on to be as, as my fear too. Like, oh, this happened to someone, it could happen to me, but these are not facts, right? It's a, <clears throat> you should be scared of something when I have not experienced a, a negative feeling there. <laughs> and you mentioned the story of the black and white wolf. <laughs> and I put a note of like the greatest enemy is myself. Right. We've developed this idea that everyone's an enemy, but really the enemy is me, <laughs> where if I'm feeding that fear and I'm feeding that unknown, then I stay in that state of unknowing, of, of not knowing what's going to happen and just not instead of being open, I'm closed. Right. So <clears throat> over time, as I've changed, the people around me are confused. <laughs> almost as much as I am, right? Because they're confused about what's going on with Megan. How come she's behaving different? Why isn't she doing the things that she used to do? And, um, and yeah, it's like the fear with the people around me because they're not focusing on um, how happy I seem or how good I feel. They're focusing on the change. Why am I changing? Like, go be the same person you are. 
um, because they can expect that person. They can anticipate what's going to happen. And so when this unexpected starts to go, it's like, oh, I don't know what Megan's going to do today and <laughs> where she's at. And it's been hard to let go of friends or family that just aren't supportive of, you know, the person that I am becoming or <laughs> the being that I, you know, the purpose that I'm living in now. They can't understand that purpose, especially when it's different from um, a program that's been taught to all of us, right? Like and someone yesterday said to me, like, are you working? I said, no, I'm like, don't worry, it'll happen. And I'm like, I am not getting a nine to five if that's what you're referring to. <laughs> that is not where I'm headed, right? Tried it, done it, no. Um, change how that looks to your world. I think I've kind of touched on everything for now. We're past the, the mic over, unless you have any questions you want me to elaborate on. Thank you. I, I appreciate that feedback. And um, you've really touched on everything that we've kind of went into today as well. So I appreciate that summary. And while you were speaking, actually, the word enemy was triggered because of your emphasis on it. And so then in my mind, I was thinking, okay, what is enemy? And then I saw the my and the enna, which I don't know what that means, but then it was like, oh wait, energy and enemy are not that different in spelling. So, my energy. Right? It's my energy versus the enemy that we become for ourselves. And then externalized too, because what we don't often talk about uh, as as we climb in awareness and enlightenment, which is the ability to contain more light within our being or the vessel that transports the soul aspect of us through this incarnation in, as we go through that process, the higher we climb, the closer to the sun we get, the longer our shadow becomes. But the part that very few people necessarily want to look at is the fact we have to walk backwards through everything we didn't, didn't we didn't face before. So all of those didn't even notice I am lying denials. All of those denials then become the way we defile ourselves because we have to walk backwards through them. And then we think, oh God, I'm on the wrong path. Oh no, this is new. I don't want to deal with this. And then we freak out and we think we're on the wrong path. When the reality is, we just didn't want to deal with that the first time. So it then became like the carnage that we have to walk backwards through in the battlefield of our own life. Not to say our life is a battlefield, but it is to say we're here to be tried. Try all means that we have to go through the trials and tribulations that are going to stretch and grow us into the version of us that we need to become through the process of going through that journey and earning our way, not from a monetary perspective, but to actually reclaim the ballot box within our own inner kingdom to be able to have a vote that is responsible to and for us to be able to create instead of react. Because U R N E being the letters left over when joy has been extracted from the journey, that urn is literally the ballot box by definition. So will it be faith or fear? Peter, do you have any words you'd like to share while we're here today? Oh, thank you for asking and thank you for doing this. You're reminding me what I used to ponder, like you're your best friend, your worst enemy based on where you're at. Because yeah. the very end of it, you're always with yourself when you go to bed. Yeah. So, but, you know, thinking this sometimes or recognizing this till changing, it's a whole other thing. <laughs> And I like how you put in your book too, like, you know, how like these contain, we contain this stuff and then eventually leaks out of us. It makes us unwell, makes sense. And yeah, it's true. We don't really recognize like these parts of ourselves that we forget about because we, something happens that we weren't able to process or to recognize it. 
And that's this year is kind of bringing things back to me and sort of see there's a lot of parts that we're afraid of because we got upset with something. So, yeah, and it is all energy. I guess what you were just explaining makes me think of, you know, there's your authentic self yourself, and then there's a part of yourself that shut off that wasn't present. And that's because and that's we see as an enemy or a part that we don't see as love because we don't comprehend what's going on. So the cat is uh expressing his need for play and uh <laughs> he needs to get outside, but I have to get him out the window and he's uh anyway. Um he's yeah. he tear up paper. <laughs> yeah it's cats are funny they want they know what they want they don't settle for it anything less yeah cats are absolute individuals dogs have masters cats have servants <laughs> <laughs> well said yeah I, there's a plaque I've, I've i've got a plaque of it i'm reminded regularly <laughs> <laughs> I, I i appreciate those insights and yeah like we are the only one we go to bed with every night and wake up to every night or every morning or whatever time we go to bed and get back up we're the ones that are there with us so to figure out how to be kind yeah and gentle and you know self and find this balance between these you know who we think we are and who, who we actually are and then the question is who really are we yeah because we're not the programming of us we're not you know necessary our genetics and our parents and that and our background that's a part of us and we're not just even just a, or say our astrology say even that seems to make sense too but i think it's like all these different layers or levels of self-exploring and self-discovering so i guess there's, to a core there's an essence of we are where we're at in our own journey Yes, we are. And we're also needing to be intentional about the version of us we wish to step into as well. Because mm. the version is the verse we're going to deploy our ions into. So what's the song? What's the version that we want to be playing along to in our lives? How do we want to turn our, our life into a moving meditation? So that we recognize that it's not just about sitting in silence for however long we close our eyes to meditate and try to shut the world out and you know listen to what's already within. What if we actually saw that our life was a walking meditation, a moving meditation, that every day when we're driving our vehicles or we're at work or we're with a loved one or we're doing you're making supper, the thing or or lunch or breakfast, the things that we have to do on a daily basis. How can we actually enjoy the process of moving through those experiences more intentionally, more mindfully, more heartfeltfully, so that we actually start to experience the joy of the small things? Because so oftentimes we wait for the big things. And we think that life is going to be about the big event. And if anyone hasn't heard about November 10th and 11th, that soul, soul path in Blackstock, that's going to be an incredible event. Megan's going to be there. And Peter uh, may not be able to due to timing, unfortunately. However, um, it's just the first of many experiences of coming together in common unity to really get to know one another and to merge communities and to really find our place within ourselves alongside others who are doing the inner work to be able to do the same. So that experience I just wanted to give a little plug for, and I've got information I'll share in the details after this went live so you can actually get your uh, your ticket to be able to be part of some experiences that are really designed to help you know yourself more but this whole 66 days to transform your self-image experience is to really also help you hold in mind what you wish to create so getting more intentional about what tools you're working with you know, Megan, you talked about here, being here. 
you know, and then it brought in the cross of moving there into where here was before the T stopped presence in order to be sent somewhere else other than the now. And so if we can really get ourselves back in the now and really make that the practice, it's just like when you find yourself in the mind of the hamster wheel that takes us into time, if we get ourselves back into here and we breathe ourselves back into the moment, and then we see the thought that took us there as just being of the mind instead of the heart, that's where we find the lack of alignment when we're out there trying to line up here. Well, you can't line this up when that is where your energy is going, right? So really being clear about what is this that has called our attention out there? And then how do we actually bring that back into our heart so it can line up with our highest source and connection to be able to be aligned, to be able to find that which we came here in order to express because of what was impressed, which goes back to those neural pathways that we talked about in the beginning with the long field of grass, with all the little pathways that we've taken before. And now is our opportunity to decide, you know, is there a path that has never been blazed? Is there a point in this field you want to get to in your own mind in terms of how you want to feel about yourself? about something you want to create or said that you have manifested or been able to bring about. Is there something that you could set as a trigger for you to be able to build out so that then as you're moving toward it and the doubt does come up, you can support yourself better as you walk backwards through everything you didn't do previously because you didn't know to in order for you to get closer to that which you desire, which is how we climb higher in our consciousness through intention. You uh, made me think about like, how do I know when I'm doing the right thing or if I'm going the right direction or when I'm stuck, like, am I doing this right? Um, I guess I rely on like my consciousness, right? Of like, when I'm told that I'm doing something good, or this is good, or you're doing good, like trusting that, right? Because I have this connection, the, the brighter I, the brighter I bright, the brighter I shine, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the more that connection is stronger. Mm -hmm back to the question of like faith and fear, like faith to me, when it's, it's finding another individual to help, right? Like when I do that, that then it shows me what my purpose is. Cause you also mentioned the hamster wheel. Like when I'm thinking about what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What, how can I change this? How can I do that? And I feel like, uh, I don't really have an answer. My answer is just like, look out into the world around me for someone who needs help. And that just kind of, gets me off of the wheel and onto another place of community. And it's, uh, faith is trusting that everything has its purpose and control has no purpose. Everything has its purpose, but trying to control it, there's no purpose in that. Mm. And I simplify things by being grateful for all the little things, like that I woke up, that I'm healthy, or I'm feeling good, and that I have a warm place, like, to really simplify the gifts that I have. Uh, you mentioned like all these trying to get something bigger or something out there and looking outwards. Yeah, it's much, um, can't compare myself, right? And I have to look at how do I nurture myself? Because uh, comparing is like, it's never gonna be good enough if I compare. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. it. Now I'm making a list of the tools that I use to transform my self-image. <laughs> How am I going to do that? Yay! Well, if you want to share those as well on the Peaceful Inner Warriors United Assembly group on Telegram, I would love to have that be where more conversation takes place around self-image and the transformation of the energies in motion that need to move in order for I to become the mage that our image can be 
if we're willing to take the stage. So I so appreciate both of you for showing up this morning. And I wanted to keep it short and sweet because I don't want, like I said, this to be a super time intensive experience. However, I also want to better understand uh, what you who are here need in order to move through this process. So I'm going to end the live recording and we can have a private conversation before the end of it since it is the first and you are the ones who are here and I very much appreciate and honor each of you for showing up for me and yourselves to be able to be part of this process. So I'm going to say to everyone who is watching today, thank you for playing along with us and we will be doing daily messages and we will come together for more group opportunities like what this is. And thank you to you who took advantage of the opportunity to join me live and to everyone else, may your day be blessed. The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scoville Shin, narrated by Laura J. E. Hamilton. The Game Most people consider life a battle, but it is not a battle. It is a game. It is a game, however, which cannot be played successfully without the knowledge of spiritual law, and the Old and the New Testaments give the rules of the game with wonderful clearness. Jesus Christ taught that it was a great game of giving and receiving. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This means that whatever man sends out in word or deed will return to him. What he gives, he will receive. If he gives hate, he will receive hate. If he gives love, he will receive love. If he gives criticism, he will receive criticism. If he lies, he will be lied to. If he cheats, he will be cheated. We are taught also that the imaging faculty plays a leading part in the game of life. Keep thy heart or imagination with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4.23 This means that what man images sooner or later externalizes in his affairs. I know of a man who feared a certain disease. It was a very rare disease and difficult to get, but he pictured it continually and read about it until it manifested in his body and he died, the victim of distorted imagination. So we see, to play successfully the game of life, we must train the imaging faculty. A person with an imaging faculty trained to image only good brings into his life every righteous desire of his heart, health, wealth, love, friends, perfect self-expression, his highest ideals. The imagination has been called the scissors of the mind, and it is ever cutting, cutting, day by day, the pictures man sees there, and sooner or later, he meets his own creations in his outer world. To train the imagination successfully, man must understand the workings of his mind. The Greek said, know thyself, there are three departments of the mind, the subconscious, conscious, and superconscious. The subconscious is simply power, without direction. It is like steam or electricity, and it does what it is directed to do. It has no power of induction. Whatever man feels deeply or images clearly is impressed upon the subconscious mind and carried out in minutest detail. The conscious mind has been called mortal or carnal mind. It is the human mind and sees life as it appears to be. It sees death, disaster, sickness, poverty, and limitation of every kind, and it impresses the subconscious. The superconscious mind is the God mind within each man and is the realm of perfect ideas. In it is the perfect pattern, spoken of by Plato, the divine design. For there is a divine design for each person. There is a place that you are to fill and no one else can fill, something you are to do which no one else can do. There is a perfect picture of this in the superconscious mind. It usually flashes across the conscious as an unattainable ideal, something too good to be true. 
in reality it is man's true destiny or destination flashed to him from the infinite intelligence which is within himself many people however are in ignorance of their true destinies and are striving for things and situations which do not belong to them and would only bring failure and dissatisfaction if attained for example a woman came to me and asked me to speak the word that she would marry a certain man with whom she was very much in love she called him A.B. I replied that this would be a violation of spiritual law, but that I would speak the word for the right man, the divine selection, the man who belonged to her by divine right. I added, if A.B. is the right man, you can't lose him, and if he isn't, you will receive his equivalent. She saw A.B. frequently, but no headway was made in their friendship. One evening she called and said, you know, for the last week, A.B. hasn't seemed so wonderful to me. I replied, maybe he is not the divine selection. Another man may be the right one. Soon after that, she met another man who fell in love with her at once, and who said she was his ideal. In fact, he said all the things she had always wished A.B. would say to her. She remarked it was quite uncanny. She soon returned his love and lost all interest in A.B., this shows the law of substitution. A right idea was substituted for a wrong one. Therefore, there was no loss or sacrifice involved.